This is going to be the next video in our series on multiple linear regression. In this video, we're going to focus on the option within the framework of multiple linear regression to fit unique slopes to our data. So I'm going to caution you again in this video that multiple linear regression gives you many options for which to fit a model to your data. Unique slopes is one of the options. You should present in, analysis, in an analysis only one of these options. You should determine, based on whatever tools and science and sophisticated statistics you might learn after this class, you should choose one of the options within multiple linear regression and then generally present that one option. Choose one. Don't present all four. So we're going to continue with our example about hospitals infection risk in R as if this is the one option you choose to best represent these data. So over here in R, I'm going to continue on some set um, uh, framework we've looked at already. Uh, in the name of speed is really what I'm doing this for. These videos are creeping into too long of time. So I'm just going to skip over some stuff we've seen before, like reading in the data set named hospital, loading the library ggplot and the library dplyr, making the base plot from which we're going to start exploring the framework of multiple linear regression. We're going to try to predict the numeric response variable infection risk using the two explanatory variables, stay, which is numeric, measured in days, and the categorical explanatory variable, region, which we forced R to treat as categorical because it's encoded numerically. So the only real difference you need to change in code we've seen before is name your model better, name your model appropriate to the type of model you're looking at, and the symbol that connects your categorical explanatory variable and your numerical explanatory variable should be colon. That is shift button to the right of L. And this is going to say, for each level of region, give me a new slope on stay. But it will only give you one intercept. So we are going to force our model to have a shared intercept and unique slopes across stay. When we run that code, not much happens as long as everything went well. And then we're going to update our data frame named hospital by modifying the data frame named hospital so as to mutate it, that is, give it a new column named y hat SLPS for uh, the predicted infection risk from a model that has unique slopes by calling predict on our fitted model named fit underscore SLPS. And when we do that, we will add a column to our data frame appropriate for the predictions from a unique slopes multiple linear regression model. We can modify our plot that you see right now by adding the line appropriate to the y hat for our unique slopes model. And it's hard to see unless you look really closely, but in fact, these um, lines have one intercept, it just, they all cross way over here when uh, stay is equal to zero, and unique slopes. So that's good. And then we can look at the coefficients from this model by calling summary on our fitted object. And that's the piece we're going to pay attention to right now. So if we were to write out what the model looks like that we just fit for unique slopes, we're essentially going to try to predict infection risk. So I'll put a hat on infection risk in code as best I can. And then I'll work my way down the coefficients, the estimated coefficients, using indicator variables as appropriate. So we've got 0 0.22 for the intercept. That is the one intercept for all of these lines. For each region, they have an estimated intercept of infection risk of 0.22 when stay is equal to zero. So then working our way down, we've got a slope on stay appropriate for region one. 
So we go um, 0 0.41 times stay times an indicator variable for region 1. Let's get rid of some of these extra spaces so I don't run out of room here. We're going to work our way down to the next slope. It's 0 0.43 times stay times an indicator variable for region 2. Plus, I'm going to run out of room anyway. Plus 0 0.41 times stay times an indicator variable appropriate for region 3. Don't know what just happened there. Plus 0 0.51 times stay times an indicator variable appropriate for region 4. Now, let's try to work our way through a prediction for region, I don't know, 2 when stay equals 10. So here you go. We've got 0.22 in our model because our line, linear regression, needs an intercept. 0 0.22 plus. Are we making a prediction for region 1? We are not. So notice what happens. The indicator variable will indicate 0 because we're not predicting for region 1. It will be 0 times 10 because that's the value we're going to set stay equals to. 0 times 10 times 0.41 is 0. Great. That whole term goes away. We are making a prediction for region 2. So we're going to add 0 0.43 times 10 for stay times 1. But really, we don't need the times 1. Plus, are we making a prediction for region 3? We are not. So that indicator variable goes to 0, which means this whole highlighted term goes to 0. Last term in our model, are we making a prediction for region 4? We are not. So this whole term is going to go to 0. So we can, in this simple code right here, make a prediction for region 2 when stay is equal to 10. That's great. That's what our model estimates the infection risk to be when our stay is equal to 10. Notice through our hypothesis test up here, we have a hypothesis test on the slope for stay to try to predict infection risk. So we're essentially asking, is the slope for region 2 across stay equals to 0, or is it not? Because our p-value is much less than our level of significance, 0 0.05, we can reject HO and uh, have evidence to suggest that the slope across stay to predict infection risk is different from zero. We at least have evidence of that. That's great. There seems to be a connection between the stay in region two, the length of a stay in region two, and the hospital's infection risk. Some other things we can use this model to say is interpreting a slope. Let's just keep with region two. We could say for every one day increase in a patient's stay in a hospital in region two, we expect the infection risk to go up by 0 0.43. So that's great. Similar to before, we can interpret these coefficients alongside our hypothesis test of these coefficients. How about interpreting a slope? We would say something like for, no, when a patient in any region, because they all share the same, sorry, all, let's start this one over, interpret an intercept. And we know here they all have a shared intercept. When a patient in any region stays in a hospital for zero days, because that's what an intercept is when the x-axis is equal to zero, 
we expect infection risk to be 0.22. Now, is that a super meaningful interpretation? As far as the hospital is concerned, not really. Maybe that's an interpretation for region two, which says, or for any of the regions, which says there's a base infection risk for any person in that area. But then you get into weird sampling issues because you only sampled people at hospitals. You didn't sample people not at hospitals, which would surely pull that number down. So my point here is to say, look, there are literal interpretations of intercepts, but literal interpretations of intercepts will not always make physical sense. You as the statistician need to be able to interpret your slopes and your intercepts, whether or not they are slopes particular to a level or slopes or intercepts that are the same for all the levels. You need to be able to interpret them and understand when the literal interpretations make physical sense or don't make physical sense. A really good example that I apparently don't have a data set for immediately is it's possible to predict negative values for intercepts for data that can only be positive. Like if you can only have weights of animals that can only be positive weights, because I don't know what a negative weight animal is, unless you're reading some Dr. Seuss book and you're looking at ofts, <laughs> then uh, you know that the interpretation for an intercept that's negative for weights of animals does not make physical sense. You as the statistician need to be in charge of that. What I'm giving us here is the framework to understand when our predictions or interpretations of slopes or intercepts do or do not make sense.